This is Anabaptist Perspectives, and I'm Kyle Staltzfus. Uh, with me today is Peter Gertzen. Peter, you're an educator, is that right? I'm a high school teacher. You're a high school mm -hmm. teacher, okay. I, I think one of the things that you've witnessed and, and why you're here with us today is the, just the enormous amount of information mm -hmm that's available, well, to high schoolers, but to all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're just bathed in information from the moment we get up, if you're a smartphone user, to the mm -hmm. time we go to sleep. It's everywhere. It's always present. What are some of the effects of this, this information deluge that we have these days, and, and, and can you help us think about how to process all of the information that mm -hmm. we're getting? Well, I think the most important thing to keep in mind, or an important thing to keep in mind, um, and I should maybe say first, yeah. I certainly don't have all the answers. Uh, I can only scratch the surface uh -huh. when it comes to uh, dealing with information. Um, and it's certainly something that I'm still learning uh, how to, to best deal with for myself. But a very important issue is that the central problem with information is not the content of the information or where it comes from, mm -hmm. but how we receive it and respond to it. Uh -huh. The problem is largely internal to ourselves as information consumers um, and not external uh, in terms of, of what the information is and where it comes from. Mm -hmm. It's like Jesus said, what corrupts us is not what goes into us. Um, Jesus was speaking in the context of the Pharisees' uh, preoccupation with cleanliness and, and following correct rituals. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus didn't, uh, he didn't repudiate those concerns exactly. Um, he said in another place that, that you should listen to the Pharisees and, um, and, and do what they say to do, that those are good things. But Jesus says that becoming ritually unclean through what enters us mm -hmm. is not nearly as significant a problem as what comes out of us. Okay. It's not what goes into us that defiles us, it's what comes out of us. The problem is not with the world, although the world certainly has many problems. Uh, the world is corrupt. Much of the information that is out there for us to consume is corrupt, mm -hmm. but we are all born with that same corruption within ourselves. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, the world is not something external to us. The world is something that we are born as part of. Mm -hmm. um, when John talks about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, mm -hmm. yes, those things are out in the world. The world is full of these things, but we also, as fallen human beings, are full of these things ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we think about information that we receive and that we react to, uh, the main problem is receiving and reacting to information wrongly. Mm -hmm. We need to be cleansed by, uh, by the Holy Ghost and, and by the, the grace of God through Christ. Mm -hmm. in order to correctly receive and respond to information. Mm -hmm. So the, the problem, just to summarize and capsulate mm -hmm. what you're saying, the problem here isn't so much uh, the information, but it's, it's in our response to it. It's, it's the information itself is in some ways, it, it's, it's somewhat passive. And we, mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. person who's actually looking at it, who's beholding, who's receiving and sifting and responding to that, you're saying that's where a lot of the obligation lies. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm reminded here of um, elsewhere in the Gospels where, where Jesus says, the, the light of the body is the eye, mm -hmm. and if therefore thine eye be single, thy, thy whole body shall be full of light. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he's looking at the eye, not so much the physical instrument mm -hmm. that we have, this biological mm -hmm. thing, but it's the instrument by which we perceive things. And I think he's just acknowledging there Everybody sees mm -hmm. in some way, but not everybody sees the same things. Mm -hmm. And depending what it is, how it is we come to the information, we, we see the situations and circumstances, mm -hmm. different eyes see different things. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, keep your eye single mm -hmm. in all of that. And, and I'm hearing you saying something similar. Right? Yes, yeah, and uh, I, I haven't brushed up on my interpretation of that passage lately, but um, sure. I, I believe that, that Jesus is referring to purity okay. when he talks about uh, the eye being single. Uh -huh. um, 
And if you have more thoughts about that, I'd be glad to hear it. But, but I think that's part of the concept there. Um, when, when our perception, when our eye is purified by, um, by a love for God rather than ourselves, uh. then we are full of light. Uh -huh. um, but when our eye is darkness, then how great is that darkness? Yeah, yeah, that's right. It, it, it reminds me just to quote some um, Anais Nin, I think, she just says that uh, we don't see things as they are, mm -hmm. we see things as we are. Mm -hmm. And the encouragement yeah. here is to, to be a kind of person who's being purified, mm -hmm. and then we can actually begin to see things the way they are. Yeah. But let's set yeah. that in some contrast, mm -hmm. okay? Um, if, that's, if that's the ideal of seeing things truly and rightly mm -hmm. through Christ and through his, through his bringing us to life and seeing them truly, uh, how do we tend to respond? Well, we tend to respond in ways that feel good to us. Sure. Nobody likes to feel bad. Nobody mm. likes uh, things that are unpleasant to them. So we have a natural tendency as fallen human beings to receive and respond to information in ways that feel good to us. Mm -hmm. uh, a related concept is confirmation bias. Uh, confirmation bias is choosing to believe information that supports what we already think or what we want to think. Sure. Um, it is a bias in favor of whatever will confirm our prior commitments. Mm -hmm. um, a, a great example of this is uh, what happens when your car starts making a funny noise. Okay. Now, I don't know about you or about other people, but when my car starts making an unfamiliar noise, then my initial response is to try to explain that away as something that's not really a problem. Because <laughs> I don't want my car to be broken. <laughs> you know, it's really inconvenient for my car to be broken yeah. and to have to take it to the shop and spend hundreds of dollars fixing it. I don't want that to be the case. So when, Mark, when my car makes a funny noise, I want to think that I don't know, a stone got stuck in my tire or something. Yeah. You know, something that's not really a problem, that's easily fixed. I don't want to think that uh, there is, is truly something wrong with my car. And so I look for explanations that will prove uh, that there's nothing really that wrong with my car. Mm -hmm. The problem ended up becoming a bigger problem because I did not address it like I should have at first Mm -hmm. because I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I interpreted what I was experiencing based on what I wanted to be true mm -hmm. and not on what actually was true. Mm -hmm. Reality is not assembled according to my desires. R reality doesn't care mm -hmm. about what I want. It, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And if I don't orient myself uh, to reality as it is, then I am going to have problems. Hmm. So you're almost, you're almost saying here, it sounds like, that it, this, this, this desire of confirmation bias, mm -hmm. the terms you gave to it there, it's in a sense, it's a flight from reality. Mm -hmm. Why do we want to get away from reality? You've said as much, mm -hmm. and just kind of reiterate. Sure, that. sure. Uh, because it's not always nice. We don't always like reality. We don't always like the way things are. Uh -huh. um, so we, we, look for, we, we look for a way of thinking. We look for information that will tell us that reality is more like we want it to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't always mean that the way we want things to be is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes the way we want things to be is the way things are or the way things should be, mm -hmm. um, but not always. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to be on guard against that. And this has to be one of the significant challenges of just being a human. Mm -hmm. We have our needs, we have our wants for mm -hmm. security, we want our wants for health, and we want the people around us to thrive. Mm -hmm. These are generally good things to want. Right, but right. they can become distorted in a way that just makes us reject mm -hmm. what actually is. And yeah. when we do that, you're saying we're setting ourselves up in some ways to reject some of the gifts and the, the, the awarenesses that God might have for us. In this. Right. Yeah, yeah, and um, and with that, it's important to remember that that even when 
when things are not how we want and when they are not how they should be. There are many things in this world that are not as God intended sure. because of yeah. sin, yeah. Um, because of the, the fallenness of the world. Uh, it's, it's God's grace that repairs that. Hmm. So we don't need to rely on facts uh, or supposed facts to bring reality in line with the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. uh, there is going to be a period of time um, until the return of Christ and the, the, the recreation of the heaven and the earth that mm -hmm. the book of Revelation mm -hmm. talks about, um, that things will be set right, mm -hmm. uh, but that is where we place our hope. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, a constant temptation and mistake that, that we all face, that I certainly face, mm -hmm. to look for that kind of redemption now yeah. um, in things that, uh, that, that I can experience and see now. Yeah instead of trusting God to set it right in the future. Isn't this the original sin in some ways? You know, yeah, in it's, some it's, ways. It's the grasping for the full fruition of mm -hmm. knowledge and goodness and truth now, but mm -hmm. the, the present reality of just being one of God's creatures in a fallen world, actually in some ways, mm -hmm. it postpones that, puts it into the future. We have the hope, it overlaps with what we have, but not the fullness of it quite yet. Yes, absolutely. And th this is maybe getting a little bit speculative, but if you recall, the sin that Adam and Eve committed, mm -hmm. it was eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. Um, it was not God's intent for Adam and Eve, at that time at least. At least not yet. Not, yeah, perhaps, and again, this is speculating to a large degree. Yeah. Um, it, it was not God's intent for Adam and Eve to have that, that full experience of knowledge. Uh -huh. uh, but they did. They disobeyed God, and they ate of the fruit of that tree. Mm -hmm. And I suspect, again, some speculation going on here on my part, but I suspect that, that the sin of Adam and Eve has had a special negative impact mm. on our ability to know what uh -huh. is good and bad and true and false. Interesting. Okay. So, so I hear you caring here about the confirmation bias, mm -hmm. and, and one of the reasons we bias to, to confirm the mm -hmm. things that we want to hear and understand and see mm -hmm. in the world, it just makes us more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes reality is very uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, what, what, additional, what additional factors might you talk about here that sometimes rearrange how we look at the facts? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, how you look at the facts is, uh, that's an, an important point to bring out because correctly receiving and responding to information is more than just deciding what to believe, deciding what's true. Mm -hmm. Our response to facts, even correct facts, true facts, right. is also important. A good example of this uh, is found with Osama bin Laden, of all people. Okay. Uh, sometime after the 9-11 attacks and the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan, uh, bin Laden wrote a manifesto. It was a, a letter to the American people. And you might be surprised how much you agree with it. <laughs> okay. um, he, he talks uh, at some length about the corruption of American culture and the, the, negative uh, the negative impact of America on the world. And there are some things he says about that that, um, that I would disagree with. But other things are very, very difficult to disagree with. You know, it, we would say amen to, the lot of, to a lot of the things that he says about the sin and corruption in American society. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he speaks very, very uh, strongly um, against things that, that we would agree are wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, sexual immorality and um, substance abuse, uh, things like that. Um, so... Osama bin Laden correctly identified true problems that our society has. Uh -huh. uh, there were some things there that he was absolutely correct about, but his response to those facts uh, was wrong, um, okay. which is putting it mildly. Mm -hmm. um, his response is to, uh, to uh, tell Americans that they need to convert to Islam or face God's judgment, Allah's judgment, um, mm -hmm. which, which he and his followers will, will mete out in, in, in Allah's name. Here. Exactly, yeah. yes. Um, which, uh, which is, 
incorrect, <laughs> to put it mildly. Mm. Um, Islam is, is not the solution to the problems in our society. Um, and it's certainly incorrect to, uh, to commit acts of violence against people, um, even if uh, they have been correctly identified as sinners. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible and, and Jesus and the apostles clearly teach against uh, those solutions that mm -hmm. Bin Laden identifies. So he has correctly identified facts, mm -hmm. but his response to those facts is very deeply flawed in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's something we have to watch out for as well. Even after we identify something that's true, we can respond to that truth in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. he's, he's correctly identifying the facts, and we can even agree with some mm -hmm. of the facts, but the, the diagnosis that he yeah. places, the narrative he, he attaches it mm -hmm. to, and the solution he finds mm -hmm. because of that, suddenly things are, are kind of radically out of phase with where we yes. need to go. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, so we talk, we've talked about bias and discomfort. We've talked some about our, our sinfulness and how it, it tends to close us in to really closed systems that just confirm what it is that we want because mm -hmm. it's more comfortable. Talk about some of the attitudes that we attach facts to. Um, th these are some of the negative consequences, mm -hmm. negative ways to, to talk about facts, to talk about discernment in the midst of these facts. Can you, can you begin to move us forward now and, and paint more of a positive picture for, for mm -hmm. how we can actually encounter the facts and perceive well? Yeah, well, I can move in that direction at least, hopefully. Yeah. Um, I do want to give credit to my friend Kendall Myers. Uh, he's helped me think about some of these issues and, and especially uh, the solutions to these problems. It, it would be easy, much like Bin Laden, <laughs> to correctly identify these problems of, of the, the corruption of our hearts and, and bias and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, you can stop there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we need to move beyond that and find the, the true solutions. Hmm. And the, it, if the problem is centered in our hearts, in our, our fallen, sinful, corrupt hearts, mm -hmm. then that's where the solution needs to lie as well. Uh, we need the grace of God through Jesus to recreate our hearts, um, to renew our minds, mm -hmm. like uh, Romans 12 talks about, yeah. to make us into people with the correct priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus said that the two greatest commandments are to love the Lord, with all of our beings, uh, and secondly, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Mm -hmm. The children's song is correct. Uh, it's Jesus first and yourself last, and others in between. Mm -hmm. And placing um, the Lord and our neighbors and ourselves in correct order within our own hearts is going to go a long ways. Uh, well, it, yeah, it, it is going to solve this problem. The, the issue, of course, is that this is an ongoing process of sanctification throughout our lives as Christians. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not complete in my own heart. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when our, our hearts are correctly ordered in these ways, mm -hmm. then we begin to uh, find freedom from these issues of, of bias hmm. and wrong responses. When my priority is what feels good to me, I'm going to be biased in favor of um, what, what seems like it will benefit me. Mm -hmm. um, that problem is dealt with when our priority is what is going to honor God, what's going to bless my neighbor. Mm -hmm. Then I don't need to worry anymore about what's good for me mm -hmm. um, because my priority is the honor of the Lord and the good of my neighbor. Mm -hmm. So confirmation bias then is going to be eliminated and it, it will help us to more clearly perceive what is true and to respond correctly. Um, instead of responding um, based on what's going to feel good to me, I respond according to what will honor God and what will bless my neighbor. But, but simultaneous to this, if I'm hearing you right, uh, simultaneous to this honoring God and mm -hmm. honoring neighbor, you're actually beginning to see the world. And it's mm. almost like you're seeing the world rightly for the first time. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, an, that's an interesting point. Um, I'm not sure I'd thought about it in quite that way, but I, I think you're right. Uh, because the world, you know, again, like I said before, the world is not arranged for our convenience. Mm -hmm. um, the world doesn't exist to make me feel good. Um, the Bible tells us that 
the world was created for the honor of God. Yeah. And when, when I am oriented towards the honor of God, first of all, then, then I am going to be able to see the reality for what it is in a way that I can't mm -hmm. when I am turned towards myself. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a distinction, and I, I think it was Luther who really liked to use the language of, of man turned in on himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it goes back, it predates him. Mm. Uh, it's in, in, in Corato Se. Um, it's this, this portrait of man kind of mm. living in his own shadow. Mm. And you're really unable to get outside of that. Mm. You can't really even enjoy God's creation because of how self-interested mm. we, we kind of naturally become. Yeah. And, and the opposite of that isn't just man open to the world, it's mm -hmm. man oriented toward God. Yes. And that yes. actually allows us to see and honor God in our relationships mm -hmm but in, in some ways just to even see the world for the first yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, it's a pretty dramatic, it's a pretty dramatic difference. It is, it, it yeah. is. Yeah, we, <coughs> if we're turned towards ourselves and dwelling within our own shadows, like you were saying, then, then we can't see anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we can't even see ourselves properly. Yeah, yeah, how and about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> that's, that's a good way of putting it. Okay, well, let's, let's take something of a practical turn mm -hmm. now, if we can. Um, I'm, I'm curious what, uh, what you might say here about uh, fact and narrative. We've mentioned a little mm -hmm. bit with maybe Osama, he had a certain reading of the facts mm -hmm. because of how as a jihadist, as a certain kind of Muslim, um, it, it, it just ended inevitably in a certain diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the narrative that you're attaching to those facts. Can you just talk to me about fact and narrative? Sure, yeah, um, and, and Bin Laden is a good example of how facts and the narratives or the overall perspectives uh -huh. that the facts are placed within. And you keep on unpacking what narrative means Yes, here. yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, it's the, the, the overall account of reality, hmm. um, the story uh, that is, is taken to explain the way that things are. Mm -hmm. um, so in the case of Osama bin Laden, um, the, the overall narrative is a narrative of the, the truth of Islam, mm -hmm. um, that Islam is the solution to the world's problems. And th that is a false narrative. Um, I, that's what I believe as a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, but within that narrative, there are some things that are true. Mm -hmm. um, it is true, for example, that uh, as Muslims teach, there is one God. That is a fact. Um, and it is true that many of the things that Muslims consider sinful are in fact sinful, ac according to the scriptures. A false narrative often, probably, usually, <laughs> maybe even always, is going to con contain some things that are true. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't dismiss the concept of of the existence of one and only one God just because that's something Muslims believe and, okay. their, and their overall belief system is incorrect. Uh, yeah, that, that obviously is nonsensical. Um, <clears throat> so we can't dismiss all information just because of where it originates from or where it is found. Mm -hmm. uh, there are going to be some things that are true that come from sources that are mostly wrong. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. And by the same token, uh, there can be uh, sources of information that are mostly right, that, um, that have overall a correct narrative, um, you know, sources that, uh, that are oriented towards God, um, that are in obedience to the scriptures um, overall. And sometimes uh, that's going to show itself in falsehoods that we may continue to promote, uh, even though we are growing towards what God intends for us. Mm -hmm. and, and our overall orientation is towards the truth. Um, I know that uh, I'm certainly wrong sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, I look back at um, some things that, that I have said in the past, um, things that I believed were facts mm -hmm. that I now do not believe. And 10 years from now, uh, there will probably be things that, that I look back on about this moment, um, maybe even this presentation, I don't know. <laughs> and that, uh, that at that point I'll say, you know, that, that wasn't quite true. That, that piece of it was false. Mm -hmm. So we can't dismiss 
every piece of information just because of where it comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and we can't accept uh, every piece of information just because of where it comes from either. Mm -hmm. um, in, this, in this fallen world, um, truth and error is going to be mixed up. Uh, that's uh, a, difficult, a, a difficult fact <laughs> uh, <laughs> that maybe doesn't make us feel good, <laughs> but, but, but it's, that's the way it is. And, um, and we, we need to deal with that as best we can. And, and, and we won't do that perfectly, but it's something we need to strive for. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, this, this all sounds very complicated. I mean, yeah. you, you're telling me that there's some true facts that can be attached to false narratives. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you may have to somehow work with, discern which of those mm -hmm. facts can be true, but somehow reject and discern the narrative, right? But there's also narratives which are true, which may contain some facts mm -hmm. which are actually erroneous, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this sounds like hard work. It's very hard work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wouldn't it be simpler just to, 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 to have some kind of ideology that makes sense of it all? It's the narrative and the facts. Yeah. Uh. Right, and we've got it. I think this is what they call a rhetorical question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, uh, sure, it'd be simpler. Okay. But so why um, you do that? Uh, well, uh, because, like I was saying before, it doesn't line up with reality. That's not the way things are. Mm -hmm. um, things just aren't that simple. And um, you know, again, <laughs> reality is is not constructed for our convenience. Um, yeah, it would be, it would be much easier if we could simply, uh, you know, find find a dotted line somewhere that we could sign our name to and everything above that is all correct. Um, yeah, but it, it is hard work. And uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what answers <laughs> I have for that exactly. Hmm. Um, you know, I, I certainly don't have all the answers by any means. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but the, the most important thing is to, um, to, to trust in the grace of God and, and ask for the grace of God mm -hmm. to change our hearts um, to be oriented towards him so that we are removing our own corruption, mm -hmm. uh, or really the Lord is removing our corruption from our hearts um, mm -hmm. and helping us to see the truth more clearly. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear you saying like this is, this is a process. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time mm -hmm. <coughs> for us to begin to, to see the world truly. It's, it's simpler in some ways to just grab for something that's hasty and quick, but it's going to take time, yeah. and it's probably a skill that, like any skill, takes practice. Yes, you yeah. have to try, and mm -hmm. there's going to be some failures along the yeah, way. Yeah, and I'm I'm certainly still practicing myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, uh, one comment I would just have here is that many times it's it's in the more complex scenarios that that happen that uh, it becomes even more difficult, mm -hmm. and the complexity is kind of amplified. Sometimes I'm thinking, uh, just an example. Um, an airplane crashes, mm -hmm. and they're, they're trying to figure out what was the sequence of events, what's the narrative mm -hmm. that helps us to understand what happened. And they've got facts well, littered all over a field somewhere. There's mm -hmm. the facts, but they've got to somehow try to make a coherent picture of how this all happened. Yeah. They start with the facts sometimes and some pieces of narrative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the first assumption and the narrative that's constructed it fits with the facts. Other times there's an accumulation of evidence mm -hmm. that starts to point the narrative in another direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the narrative that they started with was totally wrong. Yeah. And yeah. there was something they didn't anticipate. Right. The facts eventually mm -hmm. kind of teeter that narrative right off. Yeah. But the more complex of a scenario we have, you know, the more humility is required mm -hmm. to remain open to some of the possibilities here. Yeah, that's a that's a great example and and a, a very important point about humility. Uh, we need to stay humble. Um, we need to, to recognize that we are going to make mistakes. Um, even, even as uh, the work of sanctification in our hearts continues, um, even as we do our best and, and we do work hard, we are not going to get it right all the time. Um, and we need to, uh, to have the humility to, to accept that and be prepared to face the consequences of being wrong. Mm -hmm. um, in, every, in every situation where we have to receive information and figure out how to respond to it, mm -hmm. um, be ready to accept that we may be wrong and that there might be consequences for that. And we just need to accept that and yeah. trust God's grace to, to carry us through even those negative consequences. Mm -hmm. And one of the significant 
reassurances we have mm -hmm. in Christ's kingdom is that there's actually space for people to be humble. Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. there's a security that we have in the narrative, mm -hmm. in the story, in the economy of God, I guess you'd say, for human beings to be who we are, mm -hmm. fallible, but also at the same time being changed from glory to glory into the likeness who is Christ mm -hmm. himself, right? Yes. So there's space for us to be humble, and there's, there's a security that we have yeah. because of who God is and how he's worked with his people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what, other, um, what other practical things could you mm -hmm. say to us as people who are wading through the information mm -hmm. maze that we have these days? Um, the information, again, it's... Just having more information isn't particularly helpful. We mm -hmm. need a certain set of spectacles yes. to put on and look at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing you saying that we have something of those in Christ himself. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's just talk practically. What, what other than humility could you offer? Yeah. Uh, one thing that I think is important on a, on a practical level is to look as, as closely as we can at where information comes from and what the ultimate source of any particular piece of information is. Mm -hmm. And something that I've started to notice is that frequently uh, when some piece of information is put forth, um, when you try to find out where that information came from, well, it turns out that it kind of didn't come from anywhere. <laughs> oh. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no clear indication of where this information even originated. Mm -hmm. um, and that should, that should cause us to question that information. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes even if a source is given for the information, the source turns out to say something different and not to support uh, the information as it was presented. Um, and just kind of a silly example of that, uh, evidently there was uh, one of these things going around in social media that the country of Japan is planning to outlaw microwave ovens. Okay. <coughs> and. Uh, and, you know, that sounds kind of silly, but uh, who knows? Weird things do happen. Um, but when you look at where this information came from, it appears that the source of this information was uh, an, an article on a website uh, that did indeed say that uh, Japan is going to outlaw microwaves. But uh, down at the bottom of the, of the article, you know, there's a little disclaimer that said essentially, oh, by the way, this is a joke. <laughs> no. this, this is not actually true. <laughs> April um, Fool's. Huh? Yeah, th that kind of thing. Um, so uh, if, you, if you would see this, um, you know, oh, Japan's going to outlaw microwaves. Well, if you can find a source for it, um, drill down as deep as you can, and you find that ultimately there's nothing there. Somebody was making a joke, and that's where this came from. Um, and that's, that's a simple example, but um, it, it often turns out to be that way, um, that, uh, that either no source for a certain piece of information can really be found, it, it, it can't be verified in any way, or uh, the source that is given ends up saying something completely different than what has been purported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do your own source work, I hear you saying. Mm -hmm. Um, one final question, I guess, and that's just simply this, okay, more, more and more frequently I think we're, we're going to find ourselves in tough conversations, mm -hmm. um, our world globally, but even mm -hmm. especially maybe in American culture is, is pretty fragmented mm -hmm. and uh, pretty touchy. Mm -hmm. um, people hold their opinions pretty closely and they're mm -hmm. very personal. So we're going to find ourselves in conversations with people with whom we disagree. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just an arrangement of the facts, sometimes it's a completely different narrative. Mm -hmm. So suppose um, you're in a conversation with somebody who's pretty dogmatic mm -hmm. about the narrative that, there's, that they're part of, but uh, you're disagreeing with it. Mm -hmm. uh, how could you possibly engage in some kind of constructive conversation? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have the answers there. Um, you know, that's, that's something that, that I do struggle with. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think the best thing that I can say is, uh, is that we need the grace of God in those times. Hmm. Um, and I, I, I do become increasingly convinced that my, um, my response to information and my, my response to other people, my, my interaction with other people, it's going to rise out of who I am. Mm -hmm. And if I am a good person, then 
the things that I do, the way that I think, the way that I speak, um, is going to arise out of the goodness that God is doing within me. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, that, that you can't fake that. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that, uh, that there's any checklist that we can mark off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, there's the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I guess we could look at the fruit of the Spirit as some kind of checklist. Um, you know, okay, so I'm going to be loving and I'm going to be gracious and joyful and all these things. Um, but Not unhelpful. Yeah, um, but, but these, these are not the fruit of me trying really hard. <laughs> uh -huh. These are the fruit of the Spirit. Um, these fruits arise out of the work of God in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, and, and sh certainly it's good to, to think about um, how I should interact with other people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I absolutely need to, to be intentional about doing the best that I can, mm -hmm. um, but also recognize that the best that I can do is going to be the result of God's work within me. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to, to submit to him, um, to, to live in harmony with, with God and his purposes for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the fruit of that is going to be um, responding graciously uh, to other people when, when these difficult situations arise. Mm -hmm. I hear you, for one, just because it's hard to imagine these situations. Each one is so different, mm -hmm. each of these encounters. Um, but I hear you pushing back against any kind of formula or reduction, mm -hmm. and you're saying to, be, to have these encounters successfully with people who are different than we are, mm -hmm. who hold the different narratives, different facts, uh, there's nothing short of just being in Christ through the Holy Spirit that actually allows that kind of encounter to happen. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and certainly the, the Bible does give us um, examples of, of, of what, what we will be like mm. when, when God is working in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be humble. We need to be gracious. Um, we, need, we need to be bold as well and, and speak the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it is good to, to think about those goals um, to think about these things, but as things that God wants to accomplish within us, mm -hmm. um, not so much things that we can create through our own power within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for talking with us, Peter. Mm -hmm.